All right, folks, let's talk satellite communications for a minute here. Um, if you haven't done so, head over to sat123.com. That's sat123.com. And uh, they've got some amazing deals going on over at the Satellite Phone Store uh, with an affiliate program with Monkey Works. And uh, if you jump over there right now, they've got the uh, the Iridium 9555 phone set, uh, including a Faraday bag that protects your phone from EMP. Um, they've got family plans, and uh, the phone is included in that plan. Um, they've got the Bivy Stick, if you're still interested in that. This is an amazing way to do two-way communications. It utilizes a smartphone. Uh, that, too, comes with a Faraday bag. And uh, it is all satellite transmitted so that uh, it is secure. And uh, you can do it from anywhere on the planet to anyone on the planet. They don't have to have a bivy stick to communicate. You can send messages to phones and everything else. And then uh, they have this MRSAT phone still going. It's about a one-week back order. But if you key in the promo code MONKEYSAT on checkout for this particular phone, that is MONKEYSAT. Um, that will get you, uh, it'll waive the activation fee. All right. So, uh, remember that that's monkey sat for this particular phone. All right. Listen, that's it. Uh, give them a shout. If you want to, uh, you can go 941-955-1020 or just uh, go to sat123.com. That's sat123.com. Talk soon. God bless. bless. Monkey, monkey out. Monkey out. All right. Hey, good morning, folks. This is going to be your sit rep. It is Friday Live, and it is going to be 7-28-2023. And uh, we get into the skies. If you would, hit that like, subscribe, and bell for notification. Helps the channel out tremendously, and uh, we do sincerely appreciate it. So let's get over here. Without further ado, let's talk sky glass for a minute. Now, if uh, if you're looking at the skies, looking a little light, uh, starting out, it's about 102 Current number up, if we take out the trainers, T38s, text 2s, equal a little over 100. Um, actually, about 110, 115 of these bad dudes uh, are in the sky. So if you add that back into the number, we're sitting, at, well, a little over 200. Um, air refuelers are really light right now, as are a lot of our other things like C-130s, et cetera. You're going to notice a handful of stuff up, but uh, again, yeah. A little sprinkling of things. These uh, looks like a multi ship of I think those are SR20s. I'm not really sure. Uh, I guess these are trainers as well. I probably should have taken those out and not included them because that looks to be over Colorado, which is kind of a training area too. So without further ado, let's do this. Let's jump into our watch list this morning. A little light. Uh, we've got our NSA um, intelligence balloons that are up gathering data on U.S. citizens 24/7. Just notice there's a bunch of them, and there's a lot more that we can't see. A lot of survey flights. Again, more survey flights. And it uh, looks like a launch of a bunch of P-8s coming out of Jacksonville Naval Air Station. I uh, got four of them up. Uh, if we look at this last one, just getting airborne off the ground there. Another survey flight uh, down off of the east coast or north of um, between Orlando and uh the Cape Canaveral area, it looks like, maybe, survey. And then that NA is going to be that African yellowtail aviation sitting out there squawking for some crazy reason. And then this, that's a that's a spec ops bird, Canadian spec ops boys up there doing some work. Uh, we'll look at that closer here in a minute as well. But i um, not sure what that African one's doing off the coast. And uh, may just be an anomaly. But uh, again, there's German intelligence balloons gathering data on the Europeans. Uh, G5 SAM flight leaving the UK. And then an R-135 returning home. Looks like he was looking very closely at Kaliningrad and Belarus. And then you've got uh, Brio 66 also looking at St. Petersburg, Belarus area, head down south. And uh, same thing, looks like we've got another Intel grab over Constanta looking at Moldova and probably the area that is being currently active right now. And these, you got drones and Intel birds up over north of Tripoli. So they are, as always, looking at the water, what's going on off the shore there. And then uh, some more drones there in Portugal and Turkey. A lot of drones in Turkey, actually. A couple Russian birds that are currently up. But that is going to do it for our watch list. Now let's get over here to the Intel side of the house. 
And uh, notice you've got activity, Southern California, and uh, headed up towards Salt Lake City, Utah, Colorado, et cetera. And then we have what looks to be some moves out over the Carolinas and Georgia, as well as D.C. and north towards Winnipeg. And then we get over to Europe, and that's where the story begins to unravel. Intel, R-135s, everybody looking at Kaliningrad very closely. Remember, that's Russia. Looking at the battlefield, what's happening over there right now? There's a second offensive. We're going to talk more on that one, too. And then a little bit there uh, in Italy and then over the Turkey, the western side of Turkey as well. And then look at Israel and Jordan. Okay, Israel's looking at its northern border, it looks like. And then Jordan is very concerned about what's going on over here in the Saudi side of the house. What is going on across its border that they are so interested in? Million dollar question. Get down to uh, Australia and just notice we got some stuff here south of Darwin, which is to the far north. Remember, there is an exercise going on over there. So, all right, now we're talking about that. We got Philippines, a little more there as well, intel wise. Now, let's get into the survey flights. 184 last three days. We'll start off here in uh, the continental United States, aka CONUS. Some transitions, maybe looking at some highways. Uh, we've got some stuff really far north in Canada, starting to grab some data up there. Notice we're running a secondary route over North Dakota and over, it looks like part of Minnesota. Um, now, the interesting thing is it's the Carolinas. Uh, we're looking at D.C. again. This is probably after they've already done their initial analysis and they're coming back to, to clean up and polish the data would be my guess, all right? Uh, again, I think they're mapping battlefields here. I think um, if we have a collapse, uh, economic collapse, the U.S. dollar is very, you know, prominent around the world. These all, these locations, eh, you know, they are dependent on the dollar, so they're going to have to shore up their stuff if they start to change over digitally uh, and to contain the people. Again, Spain, Portugal, uh, the northern side of Italy, up there north of the calf muscle of Italy. And then um, we get out here to Australia again, Brisbane, Sydney, down south near Melbourne, um, and then over into Perth a little bit more. Nothing over. Notice New Zealand. They did their deal and got you know, off, of, uh, off of it very quickly. So, yeah, crazy. We Like I said, we're probably pushing 14, getting close to 14,000 flights, and that's just what we've caught, okay? Probably a lot more than that. So, yes, somebody is up to something big time. All right, let's talk Ruskies for a second. Uh, heavy flow out of Moscow headed into, um, we've got them going into Kaliningrad. Notice they're just rounding the loop there because they can't fly directly over it. Uh, and then notice down south, we've got it into the Caspian Sea and Algeria, then also down towards Qatar, UAE, and then down towards Johannesburg, where it's a cutoff, South Africa, right? And then we'll head back up here to uh, the, the eastern side of Russia, all right? Built a little bit of a buildup, maybe. I don't know. There's, uh, this is going to be both Air Force and dignitary flights headed in and out of those areas. So um, just, again, data point for you. And it uh, looks like we had one head over into China. So let's move on. Let's get into the drone aspect. This is going to be mainly U.S. drones here over the United States. Uh, that one is kind of curious in nature. It's over very close to the same areas that they're redoing the mapping populous stuff um, for the survey flights. Almost the exact same areas, just a higher altitude. And then over the area you normally would see DC, again, drones, probably Q4s. If I had to guess, looking out over the water, maybe inland. Um, again, you've got that ship parked. And then notice this one right there, the same area where we see the Canadian Spec Op boys doing something up in that neck of the woods over the water. All right. Been doing it for a little over a week now. Same guys, same aircraft. Then we get up here. These are going to be low-altitude drones. Notice they're north of or actually west of Hamburg and north of Denmark. Then that's probably a Q9 drone, if I had to guess, out over the Black Sea, breaking off so it's hidden. 
Um, and then the normal drones that we're starting to really watch over Turkey got little small ones down low. I bypassed it. Let's get back over to it. Yeah, right over to the far eastern side of Turkey uh, in that corner of Syria. And then you've got some stuff going on over near Bahrain and um, that general area um, between there and the UAE cutter side of the house. Nothing else down the under. All right. R-135s. Uh, looks like we got a red flag going on or some some work going on uh, there. The southern border is probably the biggest piece out of this whole U.S. thing. Everything else looks to be normal. Yes, they can see the southern border from that altitude in that direction. Those look like calibration flights out to the right side of Dallas. I hope they're calibration flights. And then notice they're looking closely at Cuba. That's because you've got the Chinese and the Russians setting up shop down there, and we got to figure out what they're up to. And uh, we'll get over here to Alaska. We do have a new R-135 uh, unit that has been stationed up there that is basically doing a lot of stuff out over uh, the Bering Sea, looking closely at the Ruskies probably in the general area. And then, of course, as always, in and out of, that's probably the U.K., R-135s looking closely at Belarus uh, as they monitor the Wagner Group in that region. All right. That's uh, nothing under. So let's get over to the sub hunters. Well, let's look at one more R-135. Just notice it's looking at Syria. All right. We've been talking about that in the last sit rep and then over the Persian Gulf. And nothing over Japan, completely blank. All right. Sub hunters. Southern California, again, same place as the drones. Um, and then notice uh, you got some stuff down off the Gulf of Mexico, probably talking to subs, looking at subs. Uh, remember, these are going to be P-8s and P-3s, Navy sub hunters. And then off the East Coast, right there where the Q-4 was looking at, as well as that little weird African yellow wings aircraft is showing a negative 900 feet off the coast there. All right, out off the North Sea and then uh, into the Mediterranean there near Malta. And then we've got them heading up towards uh, over, the, over Greece and into Constanta, all right? That's going to be a critical pinch point if we go to war, all right, that general area because the, the flow going in and out of the Black Sea. And then again, over towards Bahrain, you expect to see them there and then uh, Okinawa and then up towards Japan, all right? Okay, let's uh, look at Australia, and then we're going to bug on out uh, north of Darwin. We've got some exercises that may be tied to it. These are going to be Australian uh, sub-hunters. Uh, right, let's do this. Back over to our main board. Again, um, not too much to look at at the current moment. It's a Friday that's uh, kind of consistent um, you know, for Fridays. Flashbang schedule for today. Looks like he is leaving around 10 a.m. Going to be headed to Brunswick, Maine, and then uh, departs there, headed down to Auburn, Maine. Uh, let's see. Oh, mercy. He's going to be talking more about his great economic uh, binomics. Yeah, like I said, anytime you name it, uh, whether it's healthcare, whether it's the economy, it's always a bad sign. Uh, we are in for a heck of a ride. This is turning out to be worse than the Carter days. Uh, in terms of where we're headed. So uh, keep your eye and your pulse on that one and, because it's going to impact all of us. And then it looks like from there he's headed back home, headed for the weekend down to Delaware and the beach. All right. And that is going to be old uh, big guy. And let's see. We'll just take a look so I can show you the TFRs. This is where he's headed now, this morning around 10 a.m. and then uh, down south. So I guess he's on the campaign trail on your nickel uh, he doesn't stand a chance. Uh, keep in mind, too, that if we do engage and end up going to war, uh, the, the likelihood of him being even the candidate of choice is about nil. Uh, I don't think he's got a, a, a really, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> no chance. Notice the size of this TFR security around this general area. Normally, it's this little tiny one here, but for some reason, it has expanded uh, in the general region. And then let's see, we get over to this side. Let's see what we've got going on here. There is a TFR. Let's see what it is tied to. Hazards, probably fire. And then another, that's probably firebox. Yeah, hazards. So, all right, we'll just step away from this. 
and get into the news of what's going on out there. Okay, first up, now I am not going to talk a great deal about this right now. I did see it over in Forward Observer. They're talking a little bit about the policies that are being pushed into play. Focusing on this company, it has to do with uranium and the stand-up of these new advanced nuclear facilities. My only thing that it really drives any of this home is uh, who founded this company. This is a Bill Gates company. And if, uh, you know, if you want to say, well, that's not true, uh, let me just get down and show you who is running the show. Here he is, chairman of the board, knucklehead himself. And then uh, this dude's got his hands in. So anything this guy's got his hands in, we need to all be paying close attention to. All right. And then uh, this guy here, I don't know who he is. I haven't researched him and then nor this guy. But these are the three dudes that are all tied to this, which is getting a lot of traction with our government. So pay close attention uh, to this as we talk about it more in the future. All right. All right. Moving on. Okay, U.S. announces a 400, this is your Bohica moment, a uh, million dollar additional to the 1.2 they just announced a couple of days ago uh, for military aid in Ukraine. Yeah, this is really going to be giving them uh, more equipment, uh, uh, $400 million. It's uh, the 43rd drawdown of equipment of the Defense Department inventories for Ukraine since 2021. So they're taking our stuff yet again. And sending it over, this is the total package of value. It's not cash, hard cash on an airplane. Uh, we've already done plenty of that. This is basically uh, taking stuff that we would need to fight and just giving it to the Ukrainians because they're going to torch it and, uh, yeah, get smoked in the process. All right. Severe drought forces Panama Canal to restrict the number of daily vessel transits. That is very important as we show you how uh, the Chinese have basically been bypassing the United States as they head down south through the Panama Canal into uh, South America. Um, and uh, that's important because when you start to restrict this due to the fact that the water level has gotten down, it's going to basically slow the flow of goods, which is a supply chain nightmare. Doesn't really impact us because this stuff's not coming to us. <laughs> but... It uh, will pack, impact everybody else. All right, let's talk about NOTAMs. You can see this is what we just discussed here. You've got the Senior Living Center right here in the brown zone, and then we've got uh, him headed to the yellow zone here, which is going to be his home. Uh, but uh, today he's headed up to talk about Bidenomics. Yeah, I'm sure he will just chatter his way all the way through it. Okay, everything else, uh, again, danger spots here on the East Coast. We've got some boxes out over the area where we saw the P-8s. Uh, probably have some, again, naval subs out here, U.S. Navy subs. A lot of activity, drones and watches going on down on the southern side. Boxes to support that. Canada Fire boxes. We'll get over here to Europe, and uh, the main focus is still going to be in this general area, just notice it is chock full over Romania right now. Um, very, very high elevated levels, whether it be mill ops or just, you know, caution areas not to fly in, whatever. Um, this place right here is the spot, the big location they're looking at. And then, of course, Odessa is the part under attack. And as uh, they're pushing now to the south, this is where the big secondary offensive is taking shape. Uh, as they try to navigate through the, the minefields to get to this area. That's going to be their big push. And again, they'll probably get smoked because the Russians are firing around 60,000 rounds of artillery a day. And uh, the Ukrainians are dispensing uh, around five, upwards of 10,000 a day of U.S. assets uh, in terms of artillery, blowing through everything that we have for the year in about a month. Okay. Let's move on over to this piece. NATO will set up security in the Black Sea region after, after Russia declares parts are unsafe for shipping. So it looks like the grain escorts and whatever else it is that they are transporting from Constanta will have military escorts. Uh, this is going to get very interesting because remember the pinch point, um, if you start to look at, uh, let me back up and let's get over to the Black Sea. This right here is a major, major pinch point. It is a, uh, an entryway into the Black Sea, 
controlled by Turkey, all right? It's, uh, and Turkey is a very close ally of the Russians. And so if they decide that uh, they're going to allow the flow of military stuff coming in and out, they could do it. If they decide they want to stop grain coming in and out, they can do that as well. Um, I think the days of Turkey being a, a NATO ally are probably numbered just because they are very close with Iran and Russia. Um, and so uh, they're the one pinch point when it comes to NATO in terms of kind of playing both sides of the fence. Uh, they definitely have multiple masters and they are milking the system to get everything they can because they know that this right here is critical. Okay, moving on as we get out of that side of it, uh, let's talk about... The latest images uh, show more military equipment gathered at the Wagner camp in Belarus. This guy just looks evil, doesn't he? That's yeah, because he is. But, um, yeah, they're saying they're, they're seeing about 750 pieces of equipment and trucks of different types near the tent camp um, in what was used as the former garrison for members of the Belarusian Missile Brigade. It looks like uh, since July 19th, the amount of equipment and cars has been building steadily. It now includes 62 tent-covered trucks, 534 minibuses, vans, SUVs, pickups, regular cars, because they got to drive, 33 buses of various types, 99 trucks, including some with platform and construction equipment on them, so they're going to be building things, 26 trucks and armored vehicles used to transport military personnel. Now, you wonder, how do we know that? Well, when I show you the R-135s and the aircraft that are flying uh, parallel to Belarus, it's because, remember, those are the aircraft, the intel gathering uh, and reconnaissance planes that uh, the R-135, for example, tracking an object the size of a soccer ball, can get a pretty good head count on military vehicles and, uh, and the like, right? So this looks to be where uh, everybody went after they took the CIA's money for the uh, a coup attempt on Putin and uh, went up there, cashed their checks, set up shop, uh, in a little safe safe haven. Remember, Belarus is pro-Russian. May as well be Russia, kind of like uh, Crimea is Russia down south. And um, anyway, let's just move on to the next little data point for us. Okay, Ukraine counteroffensive breaks through the Russian defenses in a major push. That is very close to the nuclear power facility. Nothing could go wrong there, could it? But... Um, Keep in mind, too, this is the bridge that was just taken out, allowing the flow uh, to and from. So the timing of this is pretty good. Their plan, <laughs> you know it's not going to happen. Their plan is to basically push all the way down to this point in, uh, to Crimea, uh, which is a Russian stronghold. If they break through this and they make it across here, which uh, is very highly unlikely, um, that's uh, what they, pl they, they plan on doing is setting up shop down here and then pushing into Crimea. However, you've got basically a JV team trying to go to the World Series. You're just not going to get through um, because uh, the Russians have fortified this area right here. And, oh, by the way, they're just dabbling with their 60,000 rounds. So uh, this is about to be a major bloodbath. Could it be the one that kicks them in the teeth to make them realize that they probably aren't going to be successful? Um who knows? At this point, uh, you know, I think the deep state is on their heels. And this is, they're trying to do everything they can, give them every, every available resource to stave off them losing 80 years of uh, their standing up in the Ukraine. Okay. That is why, folks, when I talk about deep state, the reason why you have escorts, NATO escorts, now trying to get grain out of Constanta. Okay. Okay, let's move on over here to this side. High hopes for Ukraine's second counteroffensive against Russia. A new push uh, to smash through the Russian defense positions shows promise. Uh, I've seen some videos. I can't show them because they are uh, pretty, um, I guess, not, not good to watch uh, for any age. But, uh, yeah, it looks like this is what they are trying to push. Again, we were just talking about making it down towards Crimea um, this is the uh, Azov Sea um, and the, the four regions it illegally annexed last year, talking about Russia. 
They're trying to get this done before the cold weather arrives. Keep in mind that that cold weather, snow, uh, the Arctic side of the house is basically, um, that's Russia's strong suit. So this is going to be, uh, you know, time is of the essence in order to, to make any success for um, the Ukrainians in deep state to get down to that level. All right. Now, we talked about this, uh, this past Sunday, uh, there was a Russian fighter jet that, that basically disabled a Q-9 drone over Syria. And they're saying this is, um, again, the sixth incident this month. So um, they're getting pretty frequent with this. But it looks like the, the Russian fighter jets have found a way to basically disrupt the Q-9 drones. Now, remember, these guys are taking out ISIS uh, sorry, ISIL um, fighters in, in Syria. And uh, if we get over to the map, this is kind of the stronghold. This is where the Russians are basically flying over uh, the U.S. bases as well as up here to the north, I guess the north in this general region. We've got a lot of U.S. assets and soldiers in here as well as up here a little further north. Just notice it gets to be a lot more U.S. occupied on this side of the house. But again, you can just look at who is mixing it up in here, and you got a lot of the Iranians are, are hot and heavy into Syria right now, as are the Russians and the Turkish. Okay, now speaking of that, let me do this for you. I'm going to show you the teaser for this, uh, this Saturday. If you're over on Patreon or over on Locals with, with uh, Pastor James Cadiz, we're going to be talking about this very thing uh, when it comes to Ezekiel 38, it's uh, think of it as a, a 101, Ezekiel 38 101. But uh, that'll be available for uh, my Patreon community tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. We've been doing a lot of things, talking about deep state, talking about uh, the stuff going on here in Syria is the latest. We're kind of breaking away from all of the the, the stuff with the, the you know, the during, uh, well, let's just say this the root core of the deep state. We've breaking breaking away from that. We're really starting to talk more um, about this setup going on in Syria because I think that's where we need to be shifting and watching closely uh, in terms of what's going on. Okay, so check this out. This is pretty interesting. When we talk, when we about, talk about Gog and Magog, let's understand our terms. Magog speaks of a region. Gog okay. is a title. Presumably, that title is associated with the leader of Rosh, Russia. Here's what's interesting is if you look back just a handful of years ago, 2017, there was a, a trilateral agreement between Iran, Turkey, and Russia. And now these three are the very ones that we see as part of, I mean, they're the key ingredients when it comes to Ezekiel 38. And if we look at Syria today, as you and I have been discussing, you can see those are the three primary countries that are embedded into Syria to the north of Israel. 100%. Exactly what Ezekiel 38 tells you is 100%. going to take shape. When you start looking at Russia's prominence in these areas and they have not moved, they haven't changed, you begin to realize that you are beginning to look at not only what looks like a remarkable peace treaty and a series of friendships that are being developed between all of these nations, but it also looks like they're in prime position to attack. And the funny thing is, the nations that object will be close friends with the nations that attack. And all of them are gonna be close friends with Israel. If you're gonna look at Ezekiel 38, you, you have to look at the overall context of the passage, right? So we have to start with several things that will help to maybe educate somebody a little bit more as into how we actually got there. All right. And that, again, is exclusive content for our Patreon and for James's local members um, as we talk about the things that are starting to really unfold daily. Um, a very big, big presence of Iran right here uh, to the northern border of Israel uh, in Damascus and south of Damascus, which uh, if you have been to that region, I, I will tell you, I, I actually did a short looking over the the road to Damascus, and uh, you can see those areas, uh, line of sight. And so that's pretty doggone close <laughs> uh, 
you, you can't quite see the, their eyes, but uh, you know the white of their eyes, but uh, they're there. So anyway, okay, let's uh, let's do this. So press on. Let's take a look at what's going on with our uh, our bases and uh, the the traffic. Uh, notice we've got uh, this is Biggs Army Airfield. And uh, we have uh, Omni uh, coming inbound from Indianapolis, and then it looks like from there it's going to head over to Perot Field, probably exfilling across the, the way. Uh, notice here it looks like we are transporting more. This is Southwest Airlines 737 headed up to Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island. Um, that is more than likely taking immigrants, if I had to guess. Uh, that that base camp, it holds a lot of folks, but um, as they get processed and sent out and approved to be sent out and rehomed, um, that's uh, Southwest likes to come in as well as Swift Air and pick up some folks. So that's a, probably a plane load headed to uh, Providence, Rhode Island, and then Atlas Air headed up to Portsmouth. All right, and then let's move on over here to Dover, over to Dover, as we say. Okay. Those are TFRs. Again, this is uh, this is where Flashbang's headed home this weekend. And then, of course, this is Senior Living Center, Brown Zone. Um, yeah, a.k.a. the Swamp. The Brown Zone. All right, Dover, look at this. We've got uh, JFK coming in, Coletta Air 747, Atlas Air from Chicago 747. Heading down, another Atlas Air coming back from Ramstein 747. Then we get over to the board. Where are they heading? Marijet looks to be headed to Norfolk. And then we've got uh, that Atlas Air is headed to Ramstein. So, again, equipment, maybe some troops. JFK, uh, the Atlas Air is back, back and forth to JFK. So it's just a round robin. Pro probably, yeah, maybe troops, maybe uh, equipment. Uh, it's kind of strange to see it go back and forth from JFK. And then here, the Canberra flight. Notice that one's headed up to Bangor, Maine, 747-400. And then there's the Coletta Air. Looks like that one is is also uh, JFK bound. So, so Atlas Air J and and Coletta both headed JFK, in and out of JFK, should I say? Delayed. All right, Ramstein, man, in the soup today. Look at the weather. Looks like they've got uh, some good rain headed in uh, to Germany at this moment. Uh, we've got a Spar 76 coming in from Stuttgart. Uh, Atlas Air coming from Dover. We just talked about that. And then this one coming from Doha. That's a Trip 7 camber flight, more than likely troops coming out of the Middle East. And then that Trip 7 is going to head into Baltimore, Washington from there. All right. So it's a, a 777-200 aircraft. Then RZE Poland, if I can get it to pull up. Here we go. Uh, looks like, uh, remember, this is Ukraine over here. This is a forward operating base. Let's see what's on the board. Holy smokes. Look at all of the equipment coming in. Camber flight, Portsmouth. Camber flight from Columbus, Ohio, 747s, two of them. Go a little further down. That one's coming in from Bangor, Maine. Camber flight, 747. We saw that. That's probably troops, troops and equipment, troops and equipment. Uh, that one's coming in from... Newfoundland, that looks to be another staging ground, much like Los Angeles. Uh, it looks like they are feeding things out of that general area. Unusual to see 747s actually taking off from inside the U.S., landing in Newfoundland, and then flying over. So they are definitely setting up shop in that area, too. My guess is it, it's probably putting in some um, missile defense systems, right, uh, the, the kind of things that uh, – yeah, in case uh, we had a nuclear war or whatever it may be, up on that far northeast corner would be a good spot to have some of those in play. Um, but uh, we've seen that happen. It's, I mean, 747s don't really need to do a, a fuel stop there. They can fly all the way over to Europe from the U.S. Easy peasy. They do it all the time. So uh, stopping there tells me or indicates that we've got some type of a buildup there uh, to the northeast all right, now uh, this one here coming out of uh, Columbus, Ohio, it's uh, 747. And then this one, again, from Newfoundland. So two of them coming in from Newfoundland. And um, yeah, again, probably troops and equipment. Remember, we are adding 3,000, uh, almost 3,500 folks in from the reserves as well as um, from the inactive ready reserve. And um, that uh, that's going to take you know a little bit of time to get 
folks deployed and over there, all right? So again, looks like they're going into the forward operating base. And let's see where it's headed out of here. Headed back to Hong Kong. Going to head that way, probably fly directly uh, east, straight over it. No troops, nothing. That'll be probably an empty load, if I had to guess, going in to pick up probably some more uh, stuff that goes boom out of uh, the region. And then it'll you'll see it come from the west to the east from there. That's going to be probably a base commander coming out of Wiesbaden. Uh, National Cargo 747, yeah, destination unknown. Um, so that one's back and forth. This is, I think, uh, Army, uh, you know, chief of staff or high ranking for sure. Um, kind of what you see when you see the Gitmo planes coming in and out of Guantanamo Bay. All right. Um, the, that's usually base commander type of stuff. All right. Uh, that's going to be the Brits, probably an R-135, maybe. Uh, could be a troop transport as well. Don't know who that is. And then we get down here again, 747, 747s both departing. That one's headed to league. This one, destination unknown. Keeping it on the DL. See if we've got anything down on scheduled dockets. Nothing. All right, let's move on over here to the camber flights and see what we've got going on. Give that a second to load. Holy smokes, that was very busy for a second. I don't know if you guys saw that flash on and then it updated. Uh, but this is, uh, if you look, we've got uh, several we've already looked at coming across and then one headed back, uh, coming out of southern Spain, it looks like. And then this one looks to be headed into Kuwait. But um, yeah, it's pretty active for a Friday. A lot of movement, a lot of movement going on. Notice the 747s, those are usually going to be either things that go boom or things that uh, use the stuff that goes boom, right? All of it's precious cargo. I should say that. All right, Western Global, what are they doing now? Nothing on the board. I could see there for a, a blink of an eye some activity, but uh, it looks like they don't have anything up currently at the moment. And then, again, as this thing recycles, this is going to be NATO. One aircraft up, and let's back it up and see where it looks like to be headed back and forth. Um so, again, this is Kaliningrad, so it looks like they were just in the region there doing their thing, as you would expect. Um, Omni, we got one coming out of Hawaii back. Eh, where are you headed? Um, so we've got one, Manchester to Toronto. Again, they're moving Canadians back and forth from Europe. And then it uh, looks like this is Hawaii. Hano um, headed to Hill up in uh, Ogden, Utah. Which, by the way, just saw in the news, we lost another F-135. Looks like it flew into some weather and um, had some electronic glitches when it did so, uh, and it caused it to basically uh, otter. So um, not a good track record so far, kind of like the F-22s where we're starting to lose a lot. Even though they're super advanced, they're almost too advanced, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, it's going to be your Brits. Uh, notice a lot of activity down here in the Middle East, a lot of things rolling in and out of Europe. Um, that's your Ford operating base, so they that's the one we, we caught. Looks like that's uh, headed back into the UK. Over to our immigrant machine. Let's see what's going on. If we've got, uh, wow, that was really busy there for a second. And this is uh, pretty wild. Uh, let's see, uh, interior flights. Again, probably picking up folks. Notice this one coming out of Valley, headed all the way up north. And then these down south. So these are probably deporting people. But um, notice you've got a 72-hour holding facility here at Alexandria headed to Yuma. That's a, we know that's a known camp here. That's a prison here. Prison to El Salvador. So these are people getting deported. El Paso, El Salvador, same thing. Uh, Laredo. Also down south, and then this one, uh, this one to Chicago is probably Amazon related, if I had to guess. Okay, well, listen, that's going to do it for our sit rep today. I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your your uh, Friday, and um, we will see you um, on Monday with our next sit rep. Uh, for those over on Patreon, we'll have our usual stuff that comes out to you, the Monkey Minute, and uh, the exclusive content tomorrow morning. So. That's it, you guys. Be safe out there. God bless. Monkey out.
Thanks for watching, folks. Check out the latest gear and products over at monkeyworksus.com.